Janelle Hanchett is a mother of questionable disposition to three kids and a newborn. She'd like you to join her in the fight against helpful parenting advice. <laughs> she reads her op-ed piece, We Don't Start With Needles In Our Arms. This is a trip. You're, you'll understand after you hear this. Okay. So my name's Janelle, um, and I'm a sober alcoholic. On March 5th, I celebrated five years of sobriety. And now I'm here. What the fuck? Anyway, um, I don't particularly love talking about motherhood and alcoholism. It's not exactly the high point of my life to announce to a few thousand people that I was that mother. The trash, the hated one, the drunk, drug-addicted one. The one with two gorgeous, now four, <laughs> innocent children caught in the crossfire. And her, that dirty bitch, selfishly killing herself. But I write about it anyway, because anything else would be a lie. And maybe I can be of help to somebody someday in some way. And something, I tell you something, has got to make those years worth living. And sometimes when a famous brilliant actor dies with a needle in his arm, I read the comments from America and I can't take it. There's so much ignorance, so much blind condescension based on nothing, nothing, opinion, observation from afar, some article you read somewhere, some addict you knew, a drunk you worked with once. The comment that stuck with me like a knife in my brain is this one. Yeah, addiction isn't a choice, but shoving a needle in your arm sure the hell is. It's as if people think we start with needles in our arms. Yeah, we don't. Alcoholism and addiction are progressive diseases. They get worse over time. We don't start with needles in our arms. We'd start drinking beer with friends in high school. We start like you did. We don't wake up one day when we're 19 or 20 or 35 and say to ourselves, you know what, I need a motherfucking bag of heroin and a syringe. I started out like you. I partied and experimented with alcohol and marijuana and maybe a psychedelic or two. <laughs> Didn't everybody? Um, like a whole lot of other kids in the school, and yes, I am responsible for that. I made that choice, and if that makes me responsible for my alcoholism, then by God, I am responsible for my alcoholism. But do you think I knew I was playing with fire? Do you think I knew when I was 17 years old at a friend's house drinking peppermint schnapps, of course, that I would one day lose my children to that substance? that I would go to rehab five times, each time absolutely sure I would emerge fixed. Do you think I knew that from that, from the moment my brain tasted that alcohol, I was altered? From that moment, from that point forward, my brain would tell me that pleasure equals booze and booze only, that one day I would pursue that feeling, that relief from alcohol at the cost of everything of value in my life. Do you think I knew I'd end up in a mental institution? having spent a few days on a whiskey binge in a small apartment with a dog shitting and pissing on the floor. And the doctor would look at me and say, we knew you were crazy because no sane person would live in those conditions. Do you think I knew I'd wake up one morning on a respirator in an ER with a doctor who was sure I was trying to kill myself because I had so many substances in my body? And do you think I knew I would look at him quite honestly and say, Oh no, doctor, I'm not trying to kill myself. I do this every day. No, nope. I didn't know. I didn't know or think any of this. I was a good kid who got good grades and went to college, got honors, worked hard. I thought everybody had the experience I was having with alcohol. I thought I was having fun like everybody else. And by the time I realized I was in trouble, I couldn't stop. By the time I realized I couldn't stop, I couldn't stop. And that, my friends, might be the piece you're missing. By the time we realize we're dying, we're dying. By the time we begin to suspect a problem, we are in the grip of a deadly disease, a disease that lives in the body and mind. The body demands more, aches and screams and begs for more. The mind says, you'll die if you don't have more. It'll be okay this time. Just one more time, Janelle. It's not rational. 
It doesn't weigh options. It doesn't think about kids or home or acting careers or any other fucking thing. It thinks about itself. It tells me you're fine, Janelle. One drink won't hurt. One little line of cocaine. How do you change a mind with an insane mind? Tell me. How do you? How do you alter the thoughts of a brain when it's the brain making the thoughts? Do you see the problem here? That's where the element of choice gets really, really sticky. My brain is making the choices and my brain is the problem. You're telling me to choose different behavior when my brain is hardwired to choose more alcohol. And then the more I drink and the sicker I get, I start looking for other substances to fill an ache in my mind and soul and heart like I cannot describe. The alcohol isn't enough anymore. I've progressed to a new level. I take everything, anything, to kill the insatiable need that has become like air to me. Does this make you uncomfortable? Does it make you sick? Yep, me too. But this is it, people. This is what addiction is. Most of us start out good and decent and wanting a real life with kids and a house and a job. And we start out fooling around and maybe we're a little overzealous, but by the time we're really, really in trouble, we're dying and we're powerless. And the chances for recovery are really, really freaking slim. Most of us die in bathrooms with needles in our arms. While the world looks on and says, why didn't you just choose not to do it, you trash? Why don't we ask a schizophrenic to stop having those weird delusions? Or a cancer patient to just stop creating those pesty cells? Or a person with asthma to just get beefier lungs? What's that you say? The disease model of addiction removes the element of responsibility. Oh, okay. So if you were told you had cancer and needed chemo, would you respond to the doctor, no, I'm sorry, it's not my fault I have cancer. I'm not treating this. No. You'd get the treatment so you could live. It wasn't until somebody explained to me that I was dying of a progressive disease that I could never consume alcohol safely in any form, that my mind would always, always lie to me, that for me, to drink is to die. It was only then that a beam of understanding crept across my mind. It was only then that I began to understand my condition and how I could finally live freely like a real human. Wife, daughter, employee, and mom. At this point, I know I seem like I'm contradicting myself. I just said you can't fix a broken brain with a broken brain, and now I'm telling you that an understanding of my disease helps set me free. I can only tell you this. All alcoholics and addicts have moments of lucidity, tiny cracks of sanity where we see the truth of ourselves and our lives. And I believe some of us are lucky to get the kind of help we need during that moment of clarity or surrender or internal death. And if we're set on a path from that point, we might make it. That, at least, is what happened to me. But it's a long, long, desperate and dangerous path to get there, and some of us don't make it. Then again, maybe it's just dumb luck. Maybe some are sicker than others. Why does treatment work for some cancer patients and not others? Why do some people die and some don't? And is it the sick person's fault? Should they be blamed for losing the battle? But don't ever put me on some pedestal. Don't ever tell me, great job, Janelle. Look at the way you turned your life around. I'll blog her and shit. <laughs> that wasn't on there. I just added that. <laughs> Don't ever set me above the homeless crack addict on the street thinking I'm better because I survived my disease. There is no reason I'm here. And she's there. And there's no difference between us. I don't know why I got to live. I don't know why I didn't die alone in some bathroom, leaving two blonde-headed children to wonder and miss their mom, while the world packs up its trash in the form of one more useless addict, one more drunk, one more loser who chose to throw her life away. I take a breath and hold my kids and weep for the ones still dying.